right guys, super excited to share this with you all. This is the first foaming and washing of my 2021 RS6. Just picked this up earlier this week, got a couple hundred miles on it. And this has been something that's been in the making for a long time. Not just the wait to get the car, but to financially be in a position to have this car 10 or 15 years in the making, a lot of thinking about what I wanted, you know, making sure that I had it configured right. Uh, I'm just, I'm super excited. The car is gorgeous, turned out great. And I'm really excited tonight to do the first wash and show you all what it's like. If you're an Audi fan, check out this. I'm gonna take you deep on this journey of RS6 ownership. I'm not doing review videos as much. I wanna bring you all inside what it's like to own one of these, what it's like to think through the mods, you know, do the research, think about paint protection film. What do I like about the car, don't like about the car? Exhaust, tunes, intakes. I mean, we're gonna do it all. And I'm gonna bring you all along on the journey. I mean, it'll be fun. Um, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it. Tonight's the first wash. If your car has paint protection film on it, it's ceramic coated and it's properly protected, I don't think foaming the car adds a whole lot, to be honest. But come on, how sweet is that? I mean, let's be honest. You, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. You can definitely wash a car without getting scratches, without using a foam cannon. But the experience is like 90% better. This car does have something on, you know, when they deliver it from the factory or maybe the dealer, they put some sort of, it's it got a little slickness to it. So it's got something on it. Somebody hit it with some wax or something and we'll get that off. You know, we'll get that off. We'll strip the car all the way down. Um, make sure that we get all the swirls out. I found a couple of scratches on it. Nothing bad, but you know, just stuff that the factory didn't pick up. Uh, and we'll get that all polished down. I, so I think I'm going to be able to single step the car without any issue. Um, just bought some new polish. My stuff has been sitting around for a while. Fresh pads. So we're ready to go on that. And I've got, you know, I've got some more aggressive stuff and more aggressive. Uh, get this wedding ring off. More aggressive um, pads and polishes if we need it in certain spots but I kind of want to do the least possible. I do want to get it right though, because I'm paint, like I said, I'm paint protection filming. This is what happens when you film a car, you know, you film yourself. I'm paint protection filming the entire car. And so I do want to get all the surfaces right. Now on a two bucket wash guys, one thing that I always do is I wash my driveway as I two bucket wash. I don't see any point in not wringing the the mid out as you go. I mean, if, if you wash a section, right, you wash, God, this car is just, it's good. It's good. You wash a section, you know, flip. And most people, what they do at this point, God, this is just, I mean, I'm just like, I'm getting to know the car for the first time, you know, like I, the contours you see it you see it all more the first time you wash it uh but but guys right here why why put a dirty rag back even in your dirty bucket just give it a rinse go ahead clean your driveway while you're cleaning your car there's nothing wrong with that so i do use different soap in my foam cannon than i do in my bucket in my bucket, at least right now, I've tried a ton of soaps. At least in my right now, my bucket, I'm using Adams. And in the foam cannon, I'm using Chemical Guys, Honeydew. My favorite soap is actually Duragloss in terms of performance. But I kind of got sick of that cough syrup smell that it has. And so I've switched. But I've tried almost... Not everything on the market, but I've, I've tried 20 or 30 soaps. And what I found is that the Honeydew foams a little bit better than the Adams, but it doesn't have any slickness to it. It's a good soap, but it doesn't have like a good lubrication. And so that's why I use two different soaps, one in the bucket and a different one in the um, foam cannon. So, you know, what am I gonna do to this car? It's a good question. It's not going to stay stock. I can tell you that much. The 
car absolutely will not stay stock. Uh, how crazy we go. This is my wife's car, it's not my car. So that, that brings a lot of different considerations into play. Now my wife, she's a car girl, she's cool. She, she's, she likes a little bit of power, she likes a little bit of sound, so there's no issues there, but she's not gonna want the car to be really loud. She's a realtor, takes clients out in her car. You know, she's not gonna want it to be loud like you or I might want the car to be loud. So this, the car's beeping at me, I don't know why. First wash, I guess it thinks that I'm trying to steal my car or something, I don't know. Maybe it'll go off here, we'll get the alarm going off. God, there are so many contours on this car. I mean, you really feel it when you get your hand on it and you start washing it. You start to feel all the contours. Um, so, you know, my wife's gonna be down for a little bit more noise. This has the sport exhaust, which has been great. It sounds, I think the sport exhaust sounds the way that the, the comfort quiet mode should and the sport mode should be something more. That's like one thing I think is pretty consistent across the, um, the forums and people that own this car are saying, for a car that has 590 horsepower, yeah, it's a family car. I got four kids, so I'm like your stereotypical, I'm exactly what Audi thinks, who would buy this car, that's me. Four kids, Audi enthusiast, track, a lot of time out on a racetrack, want something with a lot of performance on the street but will still haul all my stuff haul golf clubs haul kids etc my wife you know very similar um but probably not wanting the car as loud as me so i've started to research exhaust options i'll go into more detail on what i'm going to do there in another video and honestly the market still it's still not quite where it needs to be. It's still a new car. APR, AWE, there's still a lot of companies that I know are going to come out with exhaust. They're going to come out with tuning options. They're not out yet. And I'm going to have this car for a long time. You know, I'm not trying to have this car for a few months or a year or two years. I'm going to have this car for at least 10 years, long time. So I'm not in any rush. Of course, I'm antsy. Of course, I want to get the work done. But I also want to give the market a little bit of time to develop. And I called APR this week and I just said, hey, when are you going to have an exhaust? And when are you going to have a tune for the U.S. market? They've got a tune for overseas, but they don't have the U.S. tune yet. And they said within a few weeks. So we're right there. You know, we're right on the edge where if I'm just a little bit patient, there'll be more options on the market. For the chip, there'll be more options on the market for uh, intakes, downpipes, exhaust. And I may end up going with something that's already out on the market right now. You know, I may end up going with uh, MTM and, you know, some of the Akrapovich or another exhaust that's already out. But I'd like to have the options available because I don't want anything too loud and I don't want anything not loud enough. Like, it's got to be just right. So I want to hear some other people's cars in person. No doubt, I think the aesthetics on this car are very close already. Uh, so I had, when we took delivery of the car, before I took delivery, I had 20% tent put on all around and the wheels pa uh, painted black to complete that white on black look. Then I ended up taking it back and putting 70% on that front windshield to cut down on glare and a little bit of heat. So aesthetically, I think the car is very close right now. I mean, I don't consider an exhaust to be an aesthetic item, I guess the tips, but I don't think I'm gonna change much. I'm not really considering body kits on this car. Um, I am gonna paint protection film the entire car. I'm gonna ceramic coat it. We're gonna get it completely, you know, set up the way it should be. From a protection and a, vis you know, 
cleanliness perspective. But I think the car looks really good factory. And you know, that's one of my favorite things about this car is that you guys know what this is. You all know what this car is, what it costs, how much power it has. Enthusiasts know that, Audi people know that. 90% of the population just thinks it's an Audi station wagon. It's a $40,000 Audi station wagon. And I like that. It's not, it's a, it's a, it's a flashy car only to car enthusiasts. To everyone else, it's just an Audi station wagon. And they don't really know what they're looking at. And I like that, it's understated. Um, you know, from my perspective, for a family car, this is, this is it. It's, this is top of the line. There's not really anything, I mean, you could go Panamera. I test drove those before I got this to make sure. But the Panamera interior is, it's a lot older feeling. Not that the interior is old, but like, it just feels like you should be an older person sitting in the car. You know, the console is huge. A little more leather, a little more stately. It doesn't have a sporty feel. And this has all the luxury, all the technology, but it has a sporty feel in the cockpit still. It doesn't have like a, a Bentley Rolls Royce laid back feel. It has a let's go find the mountain road feel in the cockpit. And I like that. I like that look to it. You know, obviously we're washing top down. Turning the, turning the mitt often, um, you know, not trying to do too big a sections. White, in terms of hiding scratches, hiding damage to the car. Everybody hates white, they get scared of white. White's the best car, best color for your car. Best color, I think, for hiding scratches and making paint that's not perfect, look perfect. Now obviously you have to keep it clean, but honestly white will stay clean longer than black. Anybody that's had a black car knows they look fantastic when they're just washed and then you drive it 50 miles down the road and they've got that haze all over them. I'm not saying we're going to let this car get dirty and filthy or anything, but It will look good even with a little bit of you know dirt or film on it and because it's white if we get it protected it should look really good for a really long time black optics you know this is a pain right this if anything is going to scratch on the car it's going to be this any of those black painted trim pieces we'll get all those protected Paint protection film and ceramic coated. So we won't have to worry about all that micro marring that you get and you gotta correct and it just happens over and over and over again. No matter how careful you are, that piano black, I think in my opinion, it's the piano black trim pieces are some of the hardest things to keep swirl free on any car. Uh, you know, that I've worked on. I do think there's some spots on this car that I'm gonna have to, I'm just kind of hitting the car once because to freshen it up. The next weekend we'll do a proper cleaning and we'll polish the whole thing, but there's definitely gonna be some brushwork in keeping this car clean around some of the emblems, some of the angles where I can feel that, you know, this is great mitt, the microfiber mitt's great, but I can feel it's not quite getting into some things. You know, I'll have to figure out how often this honeycomb, I wanna really get perfect. Probably not every wash, but you know, maybe that's an every other wash type of thing to get a brush in there and get that really nice. Okay, so squeeze more foam all over myself so that the car's clean. Uh, I'm gonna rinse it. Let me grab that hose. So I'm gonna hit this, you know, with a pretty good coat of bead maker. Now I'm not trying to, I'm not expecting this to be a full protective layer or anything like that. 
this is really just something that is going to get me through the next week until I can fully strip the car, polish it, and get it ready to be dropped off for paint protection film. So yeah, everybody that's freaking out because I'm using so much bead maker right now, whatever. I bought a gallon of bead maker like two years ago and I've still got some. Um, it's on a pretty heavy mist. Just you know, go ahead and use your products, guys. I've got so many waxes that I bought back when waxes were a thing, and they dried out and they caked and they're unusable because I didn't use them. Now, if you're on a really tight budget, I get it. Maybe you want to conserve product a little bit more, or it's really, you know, it's a thing, and I, I get that, but if you're buying stuff by the gallon in general, washing your cars, um, you know, once a week or once every two weeks, all this stuff is gonna last you a really, really long time. It's hard to get the towel to the point where it'll actually start to absorb water. This sounds weird, but you gotta get them a little bit wet before they start to absorb water. And when I'm drying, I'm never putting pressure on the paint. I'm never pushing on the paint. It's just the weight of the towel is all I'm trying to put on it. You can see this towel might be dead. It's not absorbing still. I'm trying to get it a little bit more wet and see if it'll start to absorb, but this one might be ready to go in the trash. There it goes. Um, I'm never pushing on the paint, right? So one thing to keep in mind is that the only time that you're ever putting pressure on paint is if you're polishing paint. Outside of that, you're never putting pressure on uh, the paint, there are plenty of chemicals that will do the work for you, okay? And so you don't need to be putting pressure on the car. If you've got a bug bomb, a bird bomb, or um, you know, a dead bug or something on the front, grab a different chemical, not a different amount of pressure. There are plenty of chemicals that if you spray on, you know, tar and sap remover is one that I use a lot of um, it works great if you've got a good chemical you spray it on it's going to soften that up and then just with the weight of the towel you can get that off so we're not trying to grab a paper towel or grab something rougher you know we're not using our fingernail to scrape stuff off the car always soft touches And I'll come back after this and I'll hit the, um, you know, I'll clean the windows. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do for protecting windows yet. So I know we're doing Expel on the whole car. I know I'm doing G Technique and I'm going to do that myself. So I'm going to polish the car, deliver it to the uh, paint protection film guys, which are some really good detailers that I've found. And I've got some friends in the Audi club that have used them here locally. If you guys know why my car's beeping, tell me. Put it in the comments if you know why my car's beeping all the time. I think my guess is that it thinks that I'm trying to steal it and it's warning me to not steal it. But I do have the key in my pocket, so maybe this car unlocks automatically when I get close to it. I don't know. I'm not trying to steal my own car. Um, so I'm gonna polish the car, deliver it polished, and Then I'm going to apply Crystal Serum Light and XO myself after. Love the G-Technique products. I've tried a lot of different coatings over the years. G-Technique are the best. They go on the easiest. They look the best. They're the easiest to remove. They have the least hazing, the least, least cloudiness. They're just really good products.
Um, I've been really happy with them. I'm gonna try to resist waxing over my coatings because it's unnecessary and G Technique actually advises against that. They say it takes away some of the slickness of the paint of the ceramic coating because what happens is that the um, the wax will hold contaminants. So a lot of people think that their coating has died and it's time to replace it because it's not slick anymore or it's not beading anymore. And what's actually happened is that those are fun, shoot that. Might need to get one of those, that looks like a lot of fun. What's actually happened is not that your coating has died or worn out, but that the wax that you put on top of the coating is holding contaminants. And so you're losing your beading, you're losing your hydrophobicness because the wax is a little bit more sticky. You know, it melts, wax melts when it gets hot and you're getting those contaminants in it. And so if you strip the wax off, but you know, not like polishing it, just chemically strip it with like a citrus wash or something, all of a sudden your coating will come back to life. Well, you, nothing really happened to your coating. It wasn't dead and it didn't come back to life. All that happened was you got the layer of junk that was piled up on top of your car off. So I know all that and I'm going to try to resist waxing it, but it's just one of those things. Paint protection film plus crystal serum light plus XO and your brain tells you there's no reason to wax it. It's fully protected. It's super slick. Then you wax it. I mean, it just kind of happens. Because it's fun to work on your car, right? It's fun to clean it. You got a car like this, you've been waiting all your life for it. It's fun to come out and clean it and detail it. Get it looking great. You know, tomorrow, I got to drive tomorrow about 200 miles. So. 24 hours from now, this car will be as dirty as it was before I washed it. Does that make it a waste to wash it tonight? Of course not. Of course not. I'm enjoying the time out here with the car, feeling the car, all the contours. You know, one thing I'll show you about this car, and this was important for me in my decision for going for um, full paint protection film versus just partial. The paint protection film on this car that covers the um, the rear high impact area, they call it. It comes up right here and it cuts off about right here, the template on the Expel. Well, this is all bulged out on the RS6. So all this stays exposed and you're only protecting this. So to get this, you've got to do the door. Well, once you've done this door, you might as well do this door. And once you've done those doors, you know, you might as well, you're going to end up with a seam right here which I don't like seams. Even though it's a white car, you won't see the seam much. You're gonna end up with a seam, so I might as well do all this. And then it's like slippery slope, right? So you just end up paint protection filming the whole car. To get the protection you want, get rid of the seams. And you know, the other thing on this car that I'll show you, this distance right here, I mean, look, this is not a McLaren or anything, but come on over here. The distance from the foot well here to stepping out, this is a pretty big distance. It's about a foot because of the way that this lower side skirt kicks out. And um, I was just worried, you know, my kids getting in and out of the car a lot. They're gonna scratch, it's a high impact area for me, for my family, the way we use the car, it's a high impact area. It's gonna get scratched up. So you gotta protect those lower side skirts. And again, it's like at some point you just get to the point where you just say, we're doing the whole car, right? I'm going to have the car for a long time. I want it to look good. I'm not trying to save a little bit of money up front. This is unbelievable. This is the moment where you all see that 
my brand new car has already got some sort of issue. So let's take our own advice. see what that is it could be a scratch already I mean that would suck but um, stoners start tar and sap this is good stuff this will remove wax it's not going to remove your ceramic coatings obviously so rather than hitting that with a lot of pressure I'm gonna find out okay so there you go so it wasn't a scratch thank God so I didn't, I didn't take my towel and push into my paint and risk scratching it. I took four seconds, grabbed stoners, hit it, wiped right off, right? That's what I'm talking about. You know, just use chemicals rather than pressure. It's a great example. All right, so tires and wheels. The way that I do my tires and wheels is I've got um, hyper dressing, Meguiar's hyper dressing, diluted four to one, great stuff. Spray on, walk away. It'll spray on white and it'll look milky, but it'll dry nice and smooth. It doesn't drive uneven. O and R, I think this is at one to one. I mean, not O and R, Optibond tire gel. Um, and then O and R, I'm gonna put on the wheels because I've already cleaned these wheels, but if I was just doing a hyper, uh, a, um, a wheel brightener, spray on, spray off, no brush, it's possible the dirt would still be on the wheel. So I go ahead and hit it with a little bit of O and R and then I'm gonna dry the wheel and that way the wheel is essentially getting clean again. There's no risk that, you know, I'm gonna scratch it up. So I just spray some O&R and this is, again, great example. I've had this same O&R for like 10 years. I think I bought a gallon of it. It dilutes like one to 32. I've got 32 gallons of it. It's ridiculous. Um, Optibon, I'll dry the tire first. If you leave the tire wet with the Optibon, it's not going to, uh, it's gonna dilute it more. And it's not gonna look great. Now, I'm one of those weird car people that likes a little more shine on my wheel. I mean, on my tire. I don't like a perfectly matte tire. I do like a little bit of shine. The shine's gonna go away super fast anyway. And I like that. Now, I don't like it slinging. So I don't wanna see it slinging back on this. So I won't put, I won't leave it and walk away like I'm going to tonight if I was driving the car again, but I'm not. So I'll just go ahead and wipe the wheel off and then I'll walk away. And tomorrow, if it turns out that I missed any spots or I have unevenness on that tire, I may hit it with a little bit more or take a sponge and just even it out. But I tend to just, whoops. I tend to just spray it on like that and walk away. And you know, this is a great way to see, did I get the wheel clean? Right, I got a little bit of dirt here. That's probably from the tire, from the rag hitting the tire. Uh, these rags, guys, Costco for wheels, door jams. Costco, wash them if you want. I don't wash mine much, I throw them away. Again, a package of like, I don't know, 40 of those microfibers from Costco is 15 bucks. So if you use one every time you wash your car and you wash it once a week, over the course of a year, you're gonna use one package of $15 or $20 microfibers, whatever they are. It's just not really worth keeping them super clean and super great shape. I mean, obviously you don't, you don't wanna throw away something that's in good shape. If you're just doing door jams or whatever, no big deal, wash them like you would normally would. But the second they start to get a little bit grimy, they're just not expensive enough to hold on to, and it's not, it's not like saying I'm loaded or anything. I mean, I'm just saying that the, um, you know, a year's supply of them at Costco is like 15 bucks or 20 bucks. So you don't, you don't want to take something like this, for example, that I've got use, I'm using it on my wheel and I'm getting it dirty and throw it in with your pluffles in the wash. You don't want to do that. You don't want to risk contaminating. You wash them separately. If these get to the point where they're getting crusty or they're not coming out clean, they're not expensive enough to stress about. I'm just tossing. I keep mine around because I do work on my cars. You know, I do oil changes and everything myself. Uh, I've had a couple race cars. My kids race go-karts. So I got oil spills and fuel spills and all sorts of stuff all the time that I'm dealing with. So I keep them around. 
in a um, separate bin. And then when I have some sort of mess that I need to clean up, I'll clean them up, you know, basically ruin them. I'll clean the mess up, basically ruin the towel in the process. And then I'll throw it in the trash. Really, really happy with painting these wheels black. Just looks so much better. The whole car overall with the black wheels just looks so much better. These, um, the 22s, and I'll do another video. I'm going to do another video on the exact package that I got. You know, I'll go through all the options I did get, didn't get. Obviously, I didn't get ceramic brakes. Nine grand for my wife's daily driver is just... It's just not worth it to do ceramics. Um, I also use, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a rust inhibitor on the rotor sometimes. That's something I'll have to keep an eye on, you know, how rusty these get. A lot of these rotors will kind of flash rust. So you can get in here. You can see this one's flash rusting already just from the wash process. So this is a daily driver. So that rust is not really that big of a deal because within 12 hours when I drive this car again, it'll be, the rust will obviously clear off as soon as you drive the car and hit the brakes the first time. But you know, if it's a car that you don't drive that much and you want to be able to go out in the garage and look at it, um, I think it's hides or something like that. You guys can look it up. I think it's called hides. I've got some in there. Rust, it works okay. It's it's not it's not perfect, but it works okay. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, just just look at the car. I mean, God, it's beautiful. It's it's just a beautiful car. So happy with the way it looks. Can't wait to take you on this journey with me.